buoyancy and flotation. This chapter is based on Archimedes principle. This principle gives relation between the weight of the body and the liquid weight of liquid displaced and it states that a body will float only if the weight of the body must equal to the weight of the liquid displaced and the weight of the liquid displaced is also called as buoyant force and this buoyant force is normally passed to the centroid of the volume displaced so just like the weight it will pass through center of gravity we have a center of buoyancy through which the buoyant force will pass so by Archimedes principle weight is always equals to buoyant force here FB is called as the buoyant force and this buoyant force will pass through the centroid of the volume displaced and is called center of buoyancy is normally represented by letter capital B so let's consider here this is a body let V is the volume of body rho m is the mass density of the body material the total volume of the body is given by capital V normally we have two cases of flotation one is called as fully submerged body and one is called as partially submerged body if the body is fully immersed in a liquid it is called as fully immersed body for the fully immersed body we can observe that the weight of liquid displaced is same as the volume of the body and in a partially submerged body we have some portion protrude above the free surface level so in this case the volume displaced will be less than the volume of the body since by Archimedes principle we have weight equal to buoyant force so here this green hatch line indicates the volume displaced which is same as the volume of the body G represents the center of gravity through which the weight will act and B represents the center of buoyancy through buoyant force will act vertically upward now here the portion which was below the free surface is called as is called as volume displaced and the center of this hatch area is called as center of buoyancy and through the center of buoyancy we have buoyant force so buoyant force will always act vertically upward and will pass through center of buoyancy the center of gravity may be different and through the center of gravity will be the weight is acting in a downward direction here also we have a center of gravity will will be site different than the center of buoyancy through this the weight will act in a vertically downward direction these two forces will must be collinear then they cancel each other and the body will be in a equilibrium let's say rho is the density of the liquid so the weight is given by rho m multiplied by g multiplied by v equal to rho multiplied by g multiplied by volume displaced in this case your g will get cancelled your volume displaced is same as the whole body volume so in this case your density of the material must equal to the density of the liquid if we apply this concept for partially submerged body then the weight is given by rho m multiplied by g multiplied by total volume must equal to density of liquid multiplied by g multiplied by volume displaced so this hatch portion is a volume displaced which is less than the total volume v so what we can conclude is that v displaced by v this ratio is always less than 1 is same as the rho m by rho so it means that the density of the material must less than the density of the liquid that is it should be lighter weight say for example wood will float then the plastic will float so density of material will be less than the density of the body for fully submerged body if your weight is more than the buoyant force in that case the body will go into sink but we are not interested in this case we want the body should be float either fully or either partially now we'll derive the equation for buoyant force for this purpose we'll consider here one three dimensional body and is fully immersed to find the buoyant force we'll consider here one square prism let this portion represents the top side and this portion represents the bottom side let's say the hatch area equals to da and the height of prism equals to h let's say the height of the top of the prism is at depth equal to h1 so hydrostatic force will act on the top surface in this fashion in a downward direction is given by rho g h multiplied by a on bottom side it will act vertically upward let's say this depth equal to h1 and the depth of the bottom plane so this force is rho g multiplied by h1 multiplied by da which act vertically downward to calculate the force on the bottom side let's say the depth of the bottom plane is h2 so the force on bottom side is rho into g into h2 into da naturally h2 is more than h1 therefore the net upward force will act in a vertical upward direction this one is called as the buoyant force on the elemental area 
so let it represented by dfb is a upward force minus downward force rho g is common in both so we get h2 minus h1 multiplied by da but if you see the figure h2 minus h1 is same as h so we get this value equal to rho multiplied by g multiplied by h into da but we have considered here rectangular prism and the cross section is da so h into da represents the volume of this ele element so to find out the total force we have to integrate this value is the integral of d rho into g into dv assuming that the density is constant so we have rho into g into integral of dv that is same as volume displaced so whether we have partially submerged or fully submerged our equation remains same and the buoyant force is given by rho into g into v displaced and always act vertically upward so we have only one principle in this chapter that is a archimedes principle which says that the weight of the body is equals to the buoyant force